flag. She's kicking out for this. The Snowbirds getting set to kick things off in the regional final. Jack, you ready to go? Let's go, Patrick. Ready for the onside kick coming from Justin Glasby. I can see it now. Here he comes, number one with the boot. It does go about 15 yards. Takes a high hop. Picked up at the 42-yard line. Snowbirds able to bring him down at the 45, and that's where Sutton's Bay will scrimmage to start this one. So, again, folks, tonight, tape delay. Thanks for tuning in after the game. Hopefully, if you know the result, we, you already know some good news. Jack, last year St. Mary's knocked out by Sutton's Bay in this round of the playoffs. Yep, yep. How much of this as a high school junior or senior do you remember and take from last year going into tonight's game? Well, you know, unfortunately for this team, they don't have a lot of guys that were on the team last year that's playing right now, but – you know, you got to have that fire behind you. They're off for a little revenge this year. They're looking to get it going on defense on this first possession. All right, they start from under center. They're going to run out to the right side. He gets five and close to the first down marker. Knocked out of bounds there by Brody Jeffers. Nate Duvall handed it off to Periard, and it's going to be a first down for Sutton's Bay. Good run there by Periard. Just a simple handoff. Up to the right side, Brody Jeffers sucked in. He's able to get to the outside. That's going to be a Pickford first down, not a Pickford first down, sorry. Sutton's Bay. Sutton's Bay <laughs> first down right there. Going to be first and 10. Norseman at the 44 of the Snowbirds. Duvall under center, handed off this time, going out to the field side, to the left side. Nice tackle. Well done. Chris Koshoniak out there, linebacker on the wide side, making a nice open field play. Chris Koshoniak on the edge, and, you know, when you look at this St. Mary defense, Chris Koshoniak's probably the one guy you want to have out on the edge making that open field tackle. Doesn't need to wrap up there, just does a nice job diving at the legs and take it down the big runner right there. Nice tackle in open space, going to bring up a second and ten. Our Buffalo Wild Wings player of the game tonight will receive a $25 gift certificate to the Gator Buffalo Wild Wings, so thanks to B-Dubs. For all you do to support Next Level Broadcasting, it's second and ten. Handoff here goes up the middle. Not a lot of room. Nice job. Pat Ballinger in there for the Snowbirds along with Ian Cool eating up the middle. Jack, we didn't see Ian Cool a lot last week. They subbed him in just a couple plays in the second half. They were going for that speed look on defense. It'll be good to see big number 55 back in there for the Birds tonight. Yeah, we only saw him in there for a few plays. He was in on the uh, the defensive once Misa got down to the goal line. He right. ended up going in the game. But he's a big player. He's an impact player for the Snowbirds on defense, doing a nice job showing his presence right there. Going to bring up a third down and nine right now. Scrimmaging from the Snowbird, 43. Now they're going to spread things out. QB, Nate Duvall will go in the shotgun. Jake Murphy's the up back up to his right. Duvall back looking to his left, now right. Now back to the left. He's going to look to run. Snowbirds give pressure. He'll finally get rid of it, and it is picked off. Dom Keister interception at the 35-yard line. He brings it out to the 46. Jack Cordy, a big play for Dom Keister to get the Snowbirds the ball back early. Great lead there by Dom Keister. Excellent job also by Acevedo coming up on Duvall, forcing him to backpedal, throw the ball off his back foot. Dominic Keister in the right spot makes a nice play right there for the interception. Just, just good coverage initially, too, by the Snowbird defensive backfield before the ball was thrown. Yep. Duvall was not able to make the pass initially. He got yep. rolled out to his right, and then and then Keister came up with the big play. So good job on the back end by the rest of the defensive mm -hmm. backs for the Snowbirds and as I well. And I don't think Duvall's used to that. Sutton's Bay has dominated just about every game right. this year. They've had one close game. Uh, he's not used to players like Dominic Keister, so excellent job right there. we got Chris Koshoniak in the shotgun. He's going to hand to Conrad Cordy, goes off left tackle. Going to try to reserve reverse field, but a nice tackle made. Trailing the play there was big number 57, Cameron Elberts, the junior backer for the Norsemen. And you saw the handoff coming as Conrad Cordy is starting to get uh, more handoffs here late in the season as opposed to catching passes. But right there, you just got to start getting upfield. You know, you see it. It's been happening at this part of the year, Patrick. The last few weeks, every single cut lead usually leads to someone slipping up. So they're going to change it up, put Cordy wide, Keister alone in the, or Shoniak alone in the shotgun. Chris is back there, five offensive linemen. He's going to hand off to Brody Jeffers, cuts back up the middle, and he's going to bust ahead for about five yards. And they'll call it third and six. That's a good gain right there by Jeffers. Looks like he didn't have a lot, but ran up the hole right there. Going to bring up a third and six. Right now, the defense for these teams showing out right now. You know, an eight man, it usually turns into a shootout, but both these teams having good defense. Could be a low scoring game. Tim Wiltsey before the game, 36 24 prediction with St. Mary's coming on top, but he's a St. Mary's guy, so That's you right. never know. <laughs> Third and six. Koshoniak shotgun. He's going to be quarterback keep. He's going to get swallowed up at the second level of that Norseman defense. Really nice play in there. I believe it was Couldn't tell right there, Patrick. I think it was 88, Michael Whitman, a senior. And so it's going to be fourth and a long two. We'll call it fourth and three. And right at uh, the Norseman 46-yard line, the Snowbirds 
more than likely, Jack, they got to be going for it here, right? They, yeah, you can see him going for it. They're going to spread it all out. Koshoniak alone in the shotgun. He's a dangerous runner. He backs a quick pass to the right side, and first down, Snowbirds. A quick pass play, and that's one way to do it, Jack. Just get the ball out to your playmakers. It was Conrad Cordy that time, and you get to Conrad in space. He's going to get a few yards for you. Yeah, and that's a very beautiful play design right there. Haven't really seen the passes like that from St. Mary's all year. St. Mary's usually prefers to go deep. You know Coach O'Connell's style in the passing game, but they decided to go for a little short pass to Cordy, able to pick up the first down. All right, Koshoniak again in the backfield. He's going to hand off to Conrad Cordy. Tries to get to the outside, but he's not going to get there. Again, great pursuit by the Norsemen. And that time it was number uh, 25, Sean Bramer, a junior defensive end, getting in there for Sutton's Bay. Yeah, Bramer just coming around the edge. No one there. He's able to make a nice tackle on Cordy. That play has so far been unsuccessful for the Birds. They lost about three yards right there. Is it just me, or does that play look like it's developing a little bit more slowly tonight? Yeah, I, pass? I agree. I agree, Patrick. Looks they like spread it out again. Yep. Koshoniak by himself. They're going to send Cordy in motion. It's going to be a QB keeper. Again, not a lot of room between the tackles. And, Jack, this might be one of those games where the Snowbirds, not a lot of room to run right up the middle. Well, you look up the middle, and you got Cameron Alberts, number 57. I mean, he looks like he could take on two snowbirds that, yeah. with that guy of that size right there. So, you know. You could compare him to Ian Cool on our side. Yeah, on the I defensive mean, yeah, he's just, he's just a beast. So right there, Kishoniak unable to get really anything going, and it looks like St. Mary's is going to have to work for every yard right here. The third and long, they got to air it out on one of these next two plays. We'll call it third and 13. 44-yard line of Sutton's Bay. They're going to spread it out. Chris is in the gun. He's going to roll to his right, look to pass. He's going to stop, pop. It is caught. That's incomplete. Wow, he ran into a – Sutton's a, Bay coach a, a, a little coach close to the sideline. Yeah. And so it knocked out the ball from Conrad's hand, and hey, it'll be I'm fourth a, down. If I'm a coach and I can get incomplete passes like that all night, I'd stand right <laughs> next to the sideline too. Coach is getting in the stat book. You'll have to talk to Conrad tonight and see if he had that one before he went, was out of bounds. It looked like he had it. It looked like he had it. It was a nice job by Koshoniak, able to gun it in there. We've got a late substitution. Dylan Croft checking out of the game. Tristan Glasby back in. Trips wide. Koshoniak in the gun. We'll see if they kick out of this formation. They're at the 44-yard line, but they need 14. Chris is going to pass. He's going to go deep up the right side. Overthrown his intended target, Conrad Cordy. And you know what, Jack? He had Dom Keister wide open yeah, in he, the middle of the formation. Keister was wide open over the middle, but if you look at Tristan Glasby up the left side, there was no one there. He just keyed in on Cordy right from the beginning, and it was good coverage right there, ball overthrown as well. It's going to be Sutton's Bay ball. Good defensive stand there by Sutton's Bay. So the turnover on downs after the Snowbirds got an interception from Dom Keister on the Norseman first possession of the game. So almost five minutes gone here in the first quarter, nothing decided. Sutton's Bay will take it and scrimmage at the 44-yard line on their side of the 50. Duvall's in the gun, two backs to his right. Duvall's going to keep it himself. He's not going to have a ton of room over there. Nice job. Dylan Acevedo got over there, and then cleaning things up for the birds was Brody Jeffers. Yeah, Brody Jeffers, and you love to see Brody Jeffers out there with no gloves. Before the game, I like to look out there, look who's seeing short sleeves and no gloves because those are the tough guys of the team, Patrick. Well, what about a guy with sleeves and no gloves? You're just kind of... With sleeves and no gloves? Well, he's still a tough guy, Patrick, <laughs> okay. as long as you got one or the other. So, okay. Bernie Jeffers out there making plays. But Dylan Acevedo, he was the Ski Valley Defensive Player of the Year, able to wrap up and get a nice tackle right there. They'll call it second and 13. Six and a half to go here. First quarter, no score. Duvall in the shotgun. Hugh Perriard to his left. Or, excuse me, he's under the gun. He's going to hand to Perriard. Nope, the give was actually to Matt Kohler, excuse me. Who was in there? Was that PB? Pat that was Ballinger? Acevedo, that oh, Acevedo, Acevedo again. Okay. right there again. What do you know? He's in on just about every single tackle, Patrick, making huge plays for the Birds all year. Going to be third and long now. When I'm looking out at the roster and someone makes a tackle, I'll just assume that it's Acevedo. <laughs> I mean, you he's just always know. by the ball. And these jerseys are looking nice, Patrick. St. Mary's looking good in the all-white. Suns like Bay looking white on good white. in the all-red. Yep. Very fresh. You know I'm all about style, Patrick. Yeah, I know you are <laughs> with the Carhartt bibs. With the, with the Carhartt sponsor. <laughs> Third and 12, no free ads. Hand off, off, right tackle, and a lot of snowbirds there. Who was it, Acevedo first? <laughs> Acevedo making first contact. I think it was finished up by yeah. Chris Koshoniak here yeah. on the near side. So it'll be fourth and about 
seven. And we expect Sutton's Bay to go for it. Five and a half to go first quarter. Ball's at the 46-yard line of the Norsemen. If you're the Snowbirds here, you got to watch for pass, fourth and long. Yeah, you got to know that the pass is coming. Just don't get beat deep. They're going to line like up to punt. punt it. Watch the fake. Got to watch the fake. Midfield. It will. Okay, they're, they are going to kick it away. It's going to land at the 30-yard line of the Snowbirds and stop there. So, really, they only get. 26 yards off that punt, Jack. Snowbirds will take that. Yeah, you've got to take it, and the Snowbirds got to get something going. You know, it looking, it's looking like so far this game is going to come down to big plays. Both defenses are playing really well right now. St. Mary's has no big plays. Same with Sutton's Bay. They had a nice handoff on the very first play of the game to pick up the first down. But besides that, St. Mary's is the only other t is, has only picked up one other first down. So two first downs so far in a game that's 10 minutes gone. Well, if you're Coach O'Connell, you got to get the ball to your playmakers in space. Yep. And so if you can't hand it off in between the tackles, we might see some of those quick passes like we saw to Conrad where they picked up that first down. Mm -hmm. We'll see what they do. Because Shoniak in the gun, two up backs to his right. He's going to keep it. Not a lot of room. I mean, Jack, they're ready for this. Chris was able to fight his way to the line of scrimmage, but that's all he'll get. I mean, they're keying in on that quarterback run. That's just a big defensive front line right there for Sutton's Bay, though. As we said, they got 57 Cameron Alberts. Yeah, 25, a, Sean Bramer's Sean big Bramer's in there, too, as well. And a number 12, Matt Kohler, the junior. I mean, that's a big up front right there, and St. Mary's so far is struggling with no gain right there. It's going to break up a second and 10. Four and a half to play, first quarter, clock ticking. Kishon now Brody Jeffers will take a snap. Brody's going to throw to Chris Koshoniak, top of the field. Overthrown. Good coverage there for Sutton's Bay, and Chris really wasn't open. That was Sean Bramer on the coverage for Sutton's Bay. Yeah, Bramer, great coverage right there. You know, the fake run, and normally with a fake run, you could see a, uh, a receiver running deep. Kashoniak, who you don't normally see running out for passes there, streaks down the field, but Bramer with just excellent coverage. Ball overthrown is going to be incomplete, and now a third down and long for the Birds. They have had nothing going for them so far offensively there. Their runs have been shut down up the middle. This is really the first team, Jack, that we've seen this year, maybe with the exception of Pelston that's been able to match the athleticism. So you're not going to see a ton of separation on the outside because Sutton's Bay has the athletes as well. So Chris Koshoniak back to the QB. He's going to pump fake, throw deep. Brody Jeffers, he's got a step. Oh, he overthrew him by two and a half yards. Brody Je no, that, that was Conrad. Conrad Cordy Open streaking up the down right field. side. Wow. He had him. That was a play. That would have been a huge pickup right there for the Birds. Ball just a little overthrown. And now fourth and ten. You got to see St. Mary's punting it right here. It was a hook and go. Chris Koshoniak sold him on the pump fake, and then he went deep, but just barely overthrown. So the Snowbirds unable to connect downfield in their passing game so far. So we'll see if Koshoniak goes to boot. And he will kick it away. We'll see where it lands at the 36-yard line, and it'll actually roll. So they'll flip the field, Jack, from the 30 to the 30. We're going to step aside. If you're looking for your dream home or nervous to purchase your first home, then you need to contact Leslie Burroughs and Nancy Jacob, your local Berkshire Hathaway affiliates. They're a real estate tandem you can trust. And after serving northern Michigan and all the surrounding areas for over 30 years, there is nothing that they haven't seen. If you're making a long-term commitment to real estate investment, why wouldn't you seek the counsel of long-term, proud, and proven agents? They're here to help you make the right move. Call Nancy at 989-614-3327 or Leslie at 989-614-1114. All right, we're back. Snowbird football on Next Level Broadcasting. First and 10, Norsemen scrimmaging from their 28-yard line. QB's in the gun, looking left. Quick pass to the left side, and a nice job. Dom Keister, open field tackle made. So they'll pick up uh, three yards probably. It'll be second and seven. Nice little screen pass right there. Sutton's Bay doing the same thing St. Mary's did a Just possession ago. Try to get your playmakers the ball in some space, and if it requires a quick wide receiver screen, that's one way to do it. Yeah, and a nice tackle by Keister right there, coming down from the safety spot, making a nice tackle in space. Nate Duvall in the gun, two to his left, two to his right. As they spread things out, Duvall, this time they're going to run same play to the right side. Oh, and a nice job. Initial contact made by Brody Jeffers, and it's going to be a block in the back here on number 42 as the yellow flag is on the field. They're going to get Stephen Bolger for a block in the back on Jeffers. Yeah, and you know, St. Mary's is kind of running the same defense that they ran last week with two down linemen only rushing. They're looking to contain the quarterback 
he's dangerous when he runs right there, but with the block in the back, it's going to back him up. And it's interesting seeing Ian Cool out there, Patrick. He's not even getting down in his stance. He's just straight rushing. <laughs> he's ready to get in there. So they'll back him up 10 yards, and that'll be uh, second and 17. You know, and Patrick sitting in the stands, it's weird seeing it because I can imagine last year I wasn't at the game, but this field had to be packed well, it, for the game, and now it's much, much less. The one thing that kept fans away, Jack, was all the snow and the cold that we had. I mean, they had they had cleared the snow on this field and on the sideline. I mean, there was snow everywhere. So it was a little bit different of environment last year. Um, but you're right, definitely more fans. But a decent turnout here despite COVID as they spread things out, Duvall in the gun. The righty senior has it. He's going to roll out to his left. And Chris Koshoniak able to run him down. Wow, that's a heck of an athletic play by Chris. That's a big open field tackle. Sutton's Bay running to the left side, trying to take advantage of Ian Cool over there. But Chris Koshoniak comes down from his linebacker spot, open space. He's a tough guy to get around, very smart football player. That's going to bring up a third and 15, 16 yards for Sutton's Bay. Both offenses right now got nothing going. If you're St. Mary's, don't get beat deep. 2.45 to go. In the first quarter, Ballinger, the one down lineman for the Snowbird defense. They're going to send a man in motion. That's Perriard dropping back to pass. Is Duvall is going to throw it over the middle. It is complete. And a first down for Sutton's Bay. He's off to the races, and Perriard is gone. Touchdown, Norseman. Wow, Patrick. That's a big touchdown right there. That's a great pass over the middle. The receiver's right there for Sutton's Bay over on the right side, able to get excellent blocking. Nice block on Jeffers, nice block on Acevedo. Frees up the running lane for Perriard, able to run into the end zone untouched. Big drive right there, that's a big play for Sutton's Bay, but a very important two-point conversion coming up as well. You knew we oh, weren't going for one, it looks like, Patrick. <laughs> you knew we weren't gonna have a six nothing back and forth. I mean, <laughs> they were gonna break it. And unfortunately for the Snowbirds, the Norsemen broke it first. So they're going for the extra point. Kick is blocked, so no good. I think that's the first extra point attempt that we've seen, Jack. Yeah. In eight man football this year. Yeah, we usually just see two point conversions. Sutton's Bay, not a very good first PAT that we've seen all year. Yeah. Not a very good showing. Maybe but, that's why they don't do it. But <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but that's a big touchdown right there. St. Mary's going to get the ball back. Got to get something going, Patrick. They've only had one first down in their first possession, and they really had to work for it. After that, they haven't been able to move the ball at all. Yeah, I think you just got to continue to try to get some quick passes to the outside like they were able to do on Conrad. That was their biggest gain so far of the night. Just get it out to guys like Conrad or Dom Keister. Uh, if Brody Jeffers is at quarterback, get it out to Chris Koshoniak. Mm -hmm. Just something to get the ball to the outside quick because Suttons Bay has done a great job defending right up the middle. Yeah, they've done a great job defending the run, but for St. Mary's, they have to be successful in the pass as well. I mean, they haven't really completed many passes yet besides that sh short screen to Cordy. If you wanted to respect the passing game, you got to get a nice play. So Suttons Bay will kick off with a six-point lead, 2.22 to go first quarter. Regional final here. Snowbirds trying to avoid back-to-back -back seasons getting knocked out here at the Norseman field. The kick is off and they're going to get the Norsemen offside. So they'll back it up five yards, and the Norsemen will kick off from their 35. You know, I remember playing high school, Patrick, and I think maybe one time or two times I saw a team that we played against or we got called for offsides in the kickoff. <laughs> and, amen, you see it just we've they seen call it every all the game. Time. Yeah, they <laughs> all do. the time. I don't know what it is. I don't know either. It's got a shout-out to the rest tonight, too. It's a cold night. They're out there. Warmed up, doing a great job. Yeah, it wouldn't be a fun night to be a referee. <laughs> I don't think any night would be a fun night to be a referee. No, I don't. You're, you're right there, Patrick. <laughs> you can't win. This time it's a line drive kick. It's going to be touched at the 25 by Jeffers. He finally picks it up at the 25, makes a move to the 30, and he's brought down right at the 30-yard line. That's where the Snowbirds will take over, Jack. And just unfortunate right there, Jeffers a little fumble with the ball. Thank God he's able to pick it up, though. Able to get a little gain on the play. It's going to be a first and 10 for St. Mary's from the 30-yard line. Need to get something going right here. Need a big play from one of their playmakers. Koshoniak, you know, normally they can just snap it to Koshoniak and he can run all over the team, but not tonight. It's a different ball game. <laughs> you really got to scheme this one. Yes, you, know, you, you do. You can't just it's play, give it to Koshoniak. It's not Jimmy's and Joe's tonight. It might be a little <laughs> bit about X's and O's. That's one of Coach O'Connell's sayings. <laughs> first and 10 birds, Koshoniak in the gun. Two up backs to his left. 
2-16 and 16 to go first quarter. Snowbird's down by six. They hand it off to Conrad Cordy quickly, and he's going to get, they'll give him about three. And that defensive line for Suttons Bay is just having everything they want, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Watching the line right now, they're dominating them, and that's going to be a key all game. If St. Mary's wants to flip the script, they got to start doing a better job on the offensive line. And you can't abandon the run in the first quarter down one touchdown. I mean, you right. have to keep going to that well or else Suttons Bay will just you know, drop five or six guys and have a field day against your passing game. So you got to stay committed to it. You just got to do a better job of getting holes up on the front. So Koshoniak back in the shotgun, two to his right, one to his left. Chris got it. Quick pass outside this time. Dom Kaiser, and there's no room. There's just no blocking out to that right side, and they're going to drop Keister for a loss of five. And that's just a good play on the outside. That's the quarterback, Duvall, the senior. Just a great play coming down from the corner spot, making a good tackle on Keister. And yet again, Patrick, St. Mary's is in a third and 12 right now. They've been playing a lot behind the chain so far in this first quarter. One ten to go first quarter. And it's just 6-0. to zero. One minute left to go here in the first quarter. It's just a funky sight to see, Patrick. Normally there's four touchdowns already <laughs> right. in these kind of games. Croft and Jeffers out to the left. Oh, and they're going to get Dylan Croft for being upside. Now Dylan Croft looked to the line judge and checked to see if he was onside. And I don't think he got anything from the line judge, so they backed him up. It looks like they're going to call a false start on okay. the Snowbirds. Maybe they got Dylan for that. When you're already behind the chains, a five-yard penalty really hurts. Yeah. Coach O'Connell looking for an explanation. You know, the you know you say it's tough to be a referee each night with O'Connell. <laughs> Whatever explanation you give him, if it's against the birds, he's not going to like it. No. Even if it totally makes sense, he no. ain't going to like it. <laughs> we'll call it third and 17. Clock is running now, 40 seconds. Looking to the sideline for the play. And this is just tough here for the birds, you know. They're going to sub out Croft for Tristan Glasby. Try and get something besides just sending four verticals. Another one. They're going to get the Snowbirds again. Tristan Glasby wasn't lined up. And maybe Bird's lucky they don't get called for intentional grounding right there. There's no receiver in the area. Chris Koshoniak has to sprint out to his right. I'm assuming Suns Bay is going to decline this. Tristan was a late sub, and he was looking again. Looking at the line judge, they yep. snapped the ball before he was ready. Glasby's got to do a better job of getting ready at the line. Well, he was a late sub. Croft was just coming off the field, and Glassby didn't have much time to get set. So we'll see what Sutton's Bay. I assume they declined the penalty. Too many men on the field. Oh, yeah, legal field. substitution. Okay. Yeah, they declined it. So it's third and 17. It's going to bring up a fourth down and 17. And Sutton's Bay's credit to their defense right now. Their defensive front just giving Koshoniak no time right now. So the Snowbirds have to have a – Quick kick here. Sutton's Bay has five guys, now four up at the line. Koshoniak has it, gets it up. Not a great kick. It's going to land at the 44-yard line. Take a snowbird bounce. Wow. And it rolled all the way down to the Sutton's Bay 43-yard line, and that will give us an opportunity to take a break and hear from our friends at J&J &J Construction. Are you interested in building a new home or renovating an existing one? With over 100 years of combined experience, J&J &J Construction is one of the most reliable and respected general contractors in our service area. J&J &J is a trusted construction partner valued by architects, subcontractors, financers, and most of all, their clients. J&J &J Construction has been completing quality homes and improvement projects that add value to the communities they serve. They bring a passion for innovation and a commitment to quality to every job they do. Call them today. First quarter action here on Next Level Broadcasting. Handoff is up the middle. Pat Ballinger brings him down, and that will be the last play of the first quarter. So after 12 minutes of play, Sutton's Bay 6, Snowbird 0. We're back in 60 seconds with the second quarter on Next Level Broadcasting. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right, Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. 
If you're looking for your dream home or nervous to purchase your first home, then you need to contact Leslie Burroughs and Nancy Jacob, your local Berkshire Hathaway affiliates. They're a real estate tandem you can trust. And after serving Northern Michigan and all the surrounding areas for over 30 years, there is nothing that they haven't seen. If you're making a long-term commitment to real estate investment, why wouldn't you seek the counsel of long-term, proud, and proven agents? They're here to help you make the right move. Call Nancy at 989-614-3327 or Leslie at 989-614-1114. All right, we're back. Snowbird football here on Next Level Broadcasting. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm Pat O'Connor, joined by Jack Cordy, Alex Pudvin on the camera, Charles Strail on the computer. They try to run things up the right side. Ball comes out. Dom Keister has it. Dom Keister, a lot of green in front of him. At the 20, the 10, touchdown, Snowbirds. Touchdown, Dom Keister, his second turnover of the night, and the Snowbirds have tied things up. Keister right now, player of the game. He's got an interception and he's got a fumble recovery for a touchdown. That's a steak dinner with the defensive touchdown right there for Keister. You know, he can't score on offense. Maybe it's a little easier to score on defense right now for the Birds. Excellent job by Keister. I mean, Coach O'Connell hyped up there on the sideline. Johnny, he's hyped up. The boys are ready to go. Big two-point conversion coming up. Sutton's Bay missed their first PAT attempt. St. Mary's with a chance to take a lead right now in this second quarter. Well done, Dom Keister in the right place at the right time, picked it up, and he was gone. Yeah, I mean, just put a bow on the ball, laid it there right for him to run to the end zone as big, we're going to have Koshoniak in the shotgun. As you said, big two-point conversion here, trying to break the tie. First play of the second quarter, big one for the Snowbirds. Defensive score for Keister. Koshoniak will get set in the gun. The two upbacks to his left. He's going to hand it off to Jeffers, and he stopped short, I believe. That's Cordy. Conrad. That's Conrad Cordy up the right side. Again, that play is not there for the Birds. They're just getting no blocking at all. They're just busting up. Conrad Cordy taking a little too long on those runs right there with those long legs. It's kind of hard for him to get up to full speed, but nice tackling there by Sutton's base, stopping the run game for the Birds as they're going to be kicking it off right now. Would be, not be surprised to see another onside kick here from Tristan Glasby. Jack, do you need to cure your hunger in a freaky fast way? Ooh, I am pretty hungry, Patrick. Well, then you got to head on over to Jimmy John's and Gaylord for mouthwater and gourmet sandwiches without the wait time or hassle at Jimmy John's. j, &J Construction, everyone has a vision for their perfect dream home, but the process of building it can be so tiresome. If that's you, you need to have j, &J Construction make your dreams a reality. Jack Cordy, maybe that defensive score will help boost the Snowbird offense. That's you what never they know. need. To get a little bit of momentum right here. I mean, getting the onside kick would be even more momentum. Hands team out there for the Birds. Gavin Bebel out there ready to make plays. Going to be Glassby again, kicking off from the 40-yard line. He's been the onside specialist for the Snowbirds this season. He's going to kick it off to the right side, and it will roll out of bounds uh, at about the 33-yard line, so they'll spot it at the 35, and that's where the Snowbirds will take over, Jack. And I have to apologize for a mistake that I've been making all season long. I've been giving Dom Keister a hard time about kicking it out of bounds. Yep. It's designed. It's designed? Yeah. Yeah, who'd you hear that from? <laughs> a couple of the players, they texted yeah. me, at, they were watching it, and they said, hey, uh, you know we do that on purpose, right? Really? I said, well, now that you mention it, it makes sense. Is it kind of more just we're either going to get the ball or it's oh, going to yeah, go you, out of bounds and you're going to get it right there? Yeah, you, you kick it out of bounds, you put the ball at the 35. If you don't have a guy that's going to kick it out of the back of the end zone every time, right. you might as well kick it out of bounds on purpose, right. and they take it to 35. There's no risk of having a return go against you at that point. Though. And especially, you know, with playmakers like Sutton's Bay and St. Mary's has, with only eight people out there, on a special teams play. That's a lot of space. That's right. And we saw it last week. It broke a touchdown against us late in that game. Here they come out in the shotgun. Duvall will take it on his third clap. Ian Cool gets in there. Duvall sets. Turn. Conrad Cordy in position. Oh, and it was knocked away by the receiver. Hugh Perry had played the role of defensive back. And he knocked it out of Conrad's hand. But Conrad, great defense and great position there on Perry had. Yeah, Sutton's Bay right now. They've thrown on their passes right now. They've had two interceptions and one long touchdown. So you never really know what you're going to get out of that play. Ball a little wobbly. Conrad Cordy able to make a nice play on the ball, nearly intercepted, but good effort there by Periard, knocking down the ball and keeping the ball in Sutton's Bay's possession. Even if the ball was thrown perfectly, Jack, I think Conrad had, had him step for step the whole way. I mean, he was hip on hip in great position, and Conrad got his head around made a play on the ball. But like you said, Periard just knocked it out. So really good play and good positioning for Conrad on that one. 
First and 10, 35-yard line, 11.39 to go, second quarter. Now they go back to the power formation, hand it off to Perryard off the right side, and he gets to the second level of the Snowbird defense. Koshoniak brought him down, but not after a gain of about seven yards. Yeah, that's a big gain right there on seven yards. Just give it to Perryard off the right side. Going to break up a third and about three. 11 minutes and 20 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Playbook wide open right here for Sutton's Bay. Chris Grody, Ian Cool, Pat Ballinger, that defensive front for the Snowbirds. That's That's been kind of their bigger stop the run front line of the defensive set. Ballinger and Cool go down to three points. Again, it's handed off to Perryard, right side again. He was dragged down short, and it'll be fourth down. I, was that Dylan Acevedo? Yes, it was. <laughs> Unbelievable. Boston right through. I mean, he just fits through all the holes, able to make a nice tackle right there. It's going to bring up fourth and about two. Rush nearly just about everyone right there for the Birds. Good play call there by Coach O'Connell. Big so, fourth down coming up right so here. fourth and two, Jack, you got to be leery of a play action pass. Yep. Because you know the Snowbirds are going to sell it on a run, but you have to be ready for that pass. Duvall's going to go under center. Two backs. Perryard will keep it, and I don't think he's going to. Oh, second effort, Jack. Wow. He's going to get it on the second effort. It looked, he looked like he was getting pushed back, and he Nate Duvall pushed up against Conrad Cordy, and I think he's going to have the yardage for the first down. It's going to yeah. be close. Yeah, you were right, Patrick. It looked like he had it. Wow. It looked like they were going to stop him short, and that's Duvall with a good second effort right there, able to spin out of the tackle and get a first down. That's a big pickup there for Sutton's Bay. And they say stay alive right now. Four more chances, get a first down, as nearly every single first down has taken both teams about four chances. He just kept his feet moving, and when it looked like he was down, just kept churning those feet, and he able to get the first down. So now they're going to spread things out. Trips right, one to his left as Duvall goes back to the shotgun. Snowbird's doing a good job being disciplined, and Duvall's oh, going to keep it. Wide open up the middle, and there's going to be a block in the back yeah. here. Wow, three flags come in, and that was an ill-advised play for number two, Jake Murphy, but he'll still have first down. Well, no, they're going to back him up. He'll, it'll probably turn into like a first and first and five. Yeah, I don't know if they'll get the first down, Patrick, but Chris Koshoniak was held like crazy up in the front right there. Coach O'Connell looking to get that call from the referees. Call missed right there, but luckily they get the block in the back. That's going to be miss the receiver right there for Suns Bay, but that was on Cordy. That was a nice first down and run right there by Duvall. If you're St. Mary's, you do not want Duvall to be running in the open field. He's very dangerous. So they'll replay the down. It will be about first and, and they'll call it first and six from the Snowbird side of the 50 right at the 49-yard line. Yeah, and just spreading it out right there. That's a nice play there. By Sutton's Bay. I mean, you see, you see all the quarter, all, all the quarterbacks in eight man. They can run, they can throw. Probably your best athlete on the team. That's what we see. Mm -hmm. And Duvall's just proving that right now. On the defensive side of the ball as well. Yes. Same with Kishonia. <laughs> That's right. First and six. Duvall in the gun. Two to his right. Two to his left. He's going to look to his right. Quick pass. It's caught. That time, good blocking set up by Sutton's Bay, and that's going to be enough the for ball the first came down. Out, it looks like Patrick. They're going to mark him down though. I think they picked it up anyways, and he's going to have enough for the first down. It'll be first and 10, Sutton's Bay at the Snowbird 42. And that's a quick screen right there. St. Mary's is rushing four against the Sutton's Bay three linemen. And those quick screens are open, Patrick. If Sutton's Bay just keeps going to them, they're working. They work for St. Mary's as well. Because we're going to have 88, Michael Whitman checking in the game for 83, Sean Wilson. Duvall gets the play from the sideline, brings it to his team. They huddled about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage, so it's a long hike back <laughs> out there. It'll be first and 10, three and a half gone. Second quarter, all knotted up at six in this regional final. Duvall under center, two backs right behind him. He hands it off the right side. A lot of room there. Getting to the second level was Sean Bramer, the junior back, and it's going to be about second and four. They'll give him six on that first down carry. That's a big gain right there, Patrick. Sutton's Bay, I mean, just keep handing it off. He can get six yards, seven yards per carry. Just keep handing the ball off. St. Mary's has got to get a stop, though. you got to stop the run game, force him to pass. That's where St. Mary's has been able to get their turnovers. And if I'm Sutton's Bay, I'm content with going under center and getting five yards of play. Yeah. 
Duvall lets the clock run down. He has it. He hands it off the right side. A little bit of a misdirection play. And he's got some room, does Bramer. And a nice hit made to knock him out of bounds on the far side. But not before another Sutton's Bay first down. So just getting a little chunks here, chunks there, and they're moving the chains. Yeah, and Bramer's a big boy there, yeah. Patrick. He's fast. He's big. Running over Dominic Keister right there. St. Mary's needing a timeout. Coach O'Connell not happy. They're going to be running the ball all over them. They'll try to reset their defense, and we're going to take a break and hear this advertisement from Tom Wagger at Wagger Tires. Believe it or not, Little Wagger Buick GMC in Gaylord sold more tires last fall than any other GM dealer up north. How? By not letting nobody beat our tire prices. The deals on Goodyear, BF Goodrich, and Firestone continue with gift cards up to $200 on a new set of tires. With free puncture repair, alignment check, and tire rotation, nobody beats our tire prices. Get your next set of tires from Wager Buick, GMC, and Gaylord. All right, we're back. <laughs> Second quarter action here on Next Level Broadcasting. Alex Pudman up on top of the press box, bringing you the camera work tonight. I'm joined by Jack Cordy, Charles Strail on the computer, and a nice visitor's press box. You don't get this treatment in a lot of places in northern Michigan. This is a nice press box, but I'm jealous of Alex Pudvin on the top of the booth. He's got the best view of the stadium. Yeah, that's He's a cool up there view with up there. Colton Ingles. Colton Ingles, the communicator for the sideline. Don't know if his mic is actually on or not, but... He's they just pretend. Yeah, they just pretend. I think so. <laughs> First and ten, Sutton's Bay. Duvall again, misdirection right side, Bramer. And a big chunk play again. Give him six yards, and it'll be second and four. And I think Sutton's Bay is realizing that their offensive and defensive lines are just dominant against St. Mary's right now. I mean, you got Ian Cool, Patrick Ballinger, Chris Grody up the middle. But Sutton's Bay has got some big boys, and Bramer's a hard guy to bring down, so they're doing a great job just driving right now another seven-yard gain. And that's not the play you wanted out of the timeout if you're Coach O'Connell no. and the Snowbirds. No. You wanted to push them backwards. You wanted another fumble recovery for a touchdown. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Seven to go, second quarter. Box loaded for the Birds. Always have to be ready for a pass. There it is. He's going to drop back to pass. Duvall is just – that's got to be intentional grounding. No referee no? in the area. Yep, there it is. at the ground. There, there it, it is. Yep. Referee yep. throws it, then kicks it a little forward to get it to a better spot. Get it to the right spot. That, that's about where Duvall was. And that's a loss of a down that's eight right. yards, Patrick? Yep, loss of down spot foul, though, so they'll put it right at the 30-yard line. It'll be a loss of down, and it'll bring up third down, and that's about third and 14. And that's good coverage right there by the Birds. Even though they blitz everyone, you see the pass coming. They do a great job dropping back and locking it down. No but choice there for Duvall. They'll back him up. Five yards from where the flag was, so we'll call it a third and 18. It's a long 18, too, Patrick. Seven minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Duvall will go back under center with Bramer and Perry Yard behind him. He's going to send Bramer out in motion to the right side. Duvall drops back. He's going to look up to Duvall to the right. He's going to throw it up to Duvall, and it is incomplete. No flags on the field. And, Jack, I mean, he was the only threat downfield. You knew it was going to him before the ball was snapped. Yeah, you got to see it going, and Jeff is just a little slow on that step. Lucky the ball was overthrown as uh, Bramer was able to get around him just as the last minute. It's going to bring up a fourth, and as you said, Patrick, about 18, 19 yards. Sutton's Bay, I mean, you got to – Go for it, right, Patrick? You're already at the 35-yard yeah, line? Yeah, you got to. I mean, worst-case scenario, Snowbirds take over at the 35. That's not horrible field position, but it's not great field position for eight-man either. So I think you just take a shot downfield here and try to get one of the Snowbird defensive backs sleeping. They did check in Logan Cherry for Ian Cool, so looking for a little more speed on the defensive line. Duvall in the gun, two to his right, two to his left. Snowbirds bring four. Duvall's going to get chased out to the left side. Duvall's going to keep it. He's at the original line of scrimmage, and he is brought down. It's going to be close. I think he's got a first down, Jack. Yeah, that's a great job there by Duvall. St. Mary's, you know, they got to do what Pelston did against St. Mary's in the game earlier this season. They got to have someone spy on Duvall. They're rushing yeah. four guys. It's easy to lose contain, especially with an athlete like Duvall. Maybe he only rushed three, put a spy on him, then he's got nowhere to run. Once Duvall is in the air, area right there, I mean, he gets brought down, but he's able to pick up 18 yards on a fourth down run. And, and Worst we, case scenario for the Birds. We heard it from Coach Wilty before the game. He said their best passing play is when they spread it out and they let Duvall just scamper with it. Mm -hmm. 
So it's first and first and ten from the 15. Duvall hands off to Bramer again up the right side. He's got five, and he's brought down after a six-yard gain. Big gain right there. I mean, the birds just blew it on that play, yeah, Patrick. You, you they, didn't, they stopped the run. They were able to get a nice blitz right there and get him into a fourth and nearly impossible situation. <laughs> yeah. Duvall's legs able to make the play, and now they're just running the ball right down their throat. I mean, St. Mary's had him in the right spot. They yeah, just you, fell apart on fourth down. You can't let a team convert a fourth and 18. That's just going to kill your your any defensive momentum that you had. Five minutes, 50 seconds left to go in this first half. Mine, uh, remember, Snowbirds will receive the second half kickoff. Sutton's Bay had it, and Dom Keister made an interception just a couple plays into this game. So the Snowbirds basically had the first possession, but they'll get the first in the second half as well. Duvall under center, fumbled snap. Duvall keeps it, now he's going to throw it, and it was caught right at the line of scrimmage. So ball hit the ground, Duvall picked it up and sprinted back and just found his man at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Nate Duvall right there doing a little Johnny football impersonation. <laughs> Corrals the ball off his offensive lineman, able to make a pass. It's going to be a no gain, maybe a yard gain to bring up a third and about – Five for Sutton's Bay, knocking on the door. Definitely fourth down territory. The Birds need to make a big stop. And if, if I'm Sutton's Bay, I'm giving it to Bramer and letting him run up the right yeah, side and see what he can do. Beast. Duvall has it. No, he's going to go drop back to pass. He gets set right wide open over the middle. Blown coverage for the Snowbirds. Two guys were guarding the receiver to the right side. No one up the middle as Koshoniak and Keister. A little miscommunication there, and that's an easy six for Sutton's Bay. Yeah, and that coverage right there, it's man-to-man. -man. Keister doing a good job going to find his receiver running the corner route, but the other receiver looked like he was going to run a corner route, came back over the middle. Koshoniak gets lost following the flow of the play. It's very easy to do once you start looking at the quarterback. It's an easy six for Sutton's Bay. St. Mary's had him in that fourth down. Now they lost six. Sutton's Bay here. Going for two. It's a big swing here if you're Sutton's Bay. As Duvall goes under center, a big playmaker for the Norseman. He's going to hand it to Bramer, and he is in. Second effort again as he stretched it over the goal line. So six and two for Sutton's Bay. It's 14 to six, 444 to go. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the second quarter on Next Level Broadcasting. Vision Source and Gaylord Eye Care are proud to be offering their services to local communities across northern Michigan. With locations in Gaylord, Boyne City, and Bel Air, they're committed to serving you and providing a trusted source of credentials and experience. If you're struggling with anything vision related, don't hesitate to schedule a consultation and experience our friendly and experienced staff for yourself. Hello, this is Charles, founder of Next Level Sandbag. And right now, it doesn't take more than a glance to see how high the water levels are in northern Michigan. As we know, lake levels go in cycles. A few years high, a few years stable, and then a few years low. I started Next Level Sandbag to give you a temporary solution to a temporary problem. Our services can save existing break walls, trees, lawns, and other features you want to protect from high rising water and add a fraction of the cost of other options. To learn more, visit Next Level Sandbag on Facebook and then give us a call. Back live with second quarter action here on Next Level Broadcasting. Snowbirds trail by eight, Jack, and it feels like the Snowbirds haven't had the football the whole second quarter. They'll get it here, and it's going to be picked up by Chris Koshoniak at the 23. He gets out to the 25, going to fight to get to the 30. He won't even get there, so good kickoff coverage for the Norsemen, and the Snowbirds will take over at their own 29-yard line. Number 11, Ben Murphy came all the way on the kickoff, tracked down Koshoniak, able to wrap him up from behind. Nice tackle there by Murphy. Koshoniak with nothing to do. It's going to be first and 10 from St. Mary's own 28-yard line. Got to get something going offensively. They've been unsuccessful in the run, unsuccessful in the pass. Their only score is from a defensive touchdown. They've got to get one of the two going. Brody Jeffers will start in quarterback at this series at the 29. Jeffers has it, hands to Corey. This time he has some room up the left side, puts an arm on a defender, has a first down and a little bit more. Conrad Cordy dives ahead, and they're going to mark him out of bounds a little bit shorter, so before that dive, man, I got I have bad memories of a referee marking a snowbird out of bounds on that sideline, Jack. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> almost like it was last year when that same call was Brady made. Brady Hunter was going the opposite direction last year, but yep. that was right about the spot. But yep. Nice run there, finally some room for the snowbird offense. Conrad Cordy gets a first down. 
Jeffers back in the gun. First and 10, 43. The hand to Chris Koshoniak. Ball's on the ground, and the Norsemen have it. Wow. Wow. Don't know where the miscommunication was on that one, Patrick. But I don't see Brody Jeffers going back at the quarterback spot uh, the rest of the game. I mean, you get a nice... You get a nice run to Cordy. Finally, the handoff to Cordy works up the left side for a big gain. Little miscommunication there on the handoff. Ball falls right into the arms of 57 Cameron Alberts. Now they got the ball back. Duvall in the shotgun. Need a quick stop. We'll see if Sutton's Bay tries to take a shot. Two wide out to the right, one to the left. Duvall in the gun. He says parry yard in motion. Comes towards the line. Now runs upfield. Dylan Acevedo was in the area pass incomplete it was intended for Perryard, and he's obviously their other playmaker Jack Hugh Perryard, number one the junior yeah he's making good plays but those right there are just nice routes nice design play there by Sutton's Bay you have two post routes going up the right side and then a drag route coming over the left side luckily that ball was knocked down it's going to bring up a second down and 10 and Duvall's got an arm on him I mean that thing was yeah. zipping up the field that yeah. was a tough play to make for Perryard. Yep, that was a good throw. And I mean, if you're St. Mary's, just keep him back. You don't have to rush up and, you know, tackle him for a big loss. Just keep him contained. You know, make him throw the ball and try and get an interception. Just don't let him break loose. Second and ten after the incompletion. Three down linemen for the Snowbirds on defense. Three at the second level, two in the back. Duvall's going to keep it up the left side. Nice pursuit there. Conrad Corey shoves him out of bounds after a couple-yard gain. Nice job there by Conrad not getting fooled on that quarterback keep. Yeah, good job by Cordy coming up able to knock him out of bounds but that's again a good play call the uh, Sutton's Bay box as I'm looking across the way you can tell that's a Sutton Bay box there's about 10 red hats yeah. in there <laughs> they got 10 eyes watching make sure they're getting the right call they must have seen that the left side for St. Mary's was sucking down a little too hard and Duvall with the keeper but he's knocked out of bounds it's going to be third down and seven for Sutton's Bay just inside the Snowbird 40 yard line Duvall breaks the huddle Sutton's Bay a unique team Jack they can put five down offensive linemen, two backs, and run it right at you, or they can spread it out. So it's tough to defend a team a like, like that. A lot like St. Mary's. Yep. Snowbirds bring four. Cordy almost gets to Duvall. Now he's going to scramble and get brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a sack as the Snowbirds ended up bringing six, and I think Pat Ballinger, Chris Grody in there at the end for St. Mary's. Nice job there by Ballinger. Just tough guy, Ballinger. No gloves out there making a big play, but Duvall making – looked like every single snowbird miss right there able to get back to line of scrimmage fourth and eight right now snowbirds need to hold them here 340 to go second quarter they'd like to get the ball back and go on a quick little drive before half they're gonna go for it fourth and nine snowbird 40 yard line snowbirds bring all eight in the box now they drop jeffers Duvall looks to pass he's gonna set throw it is complete up the right side dylan croft will not get him touchdown norseman Jake Murphy, the senior, was behind Croft and gone. And you got to wonder what St. Mary's is thinking right there. They load up everyone in the box on a fourth and eight right there, Patrick. Clear passing situation. I mean, Bramer has the ability to get those eight yards, but you got to know he's passing. Croft in coverage gets lost. That's number two, Jake Murphy. Another nice play design. It's going to give Sutton's Bay another touchdown, 20 to 6. Three minutes, 19 seconds left to go. There's going to be a timeout taken by Sutton's Bay. They really want this two-point conversion. Coach O'Connell still not happy. St. Mary's right now, Sutton's Bay is scoring like crazy, but for St. Mary's, their biggest holdup right now is their offense, Patrick. I mean, you can expect a team to get 20 points in the first half of an eight-man game, no problem, but to only have six, especially for the Birds, who have a high-scoring offense. I mean, shout-outs to Sutton's Bay defense just playing like men out there right now. Well, really, just a couple of plays have killed the Snowbirds. Obviously, that fourth and 18 that they converted on their previous drive, and then the fumble from on the handoff from Jeffers to Koshoniak there, if you erase those plays, we're probably looking at a little bit different game here going into halftime. But yep. you know, you're know, you right, Jack. You can't score six points and win an eight-man football game. It just doesn't happen. So at some point, the Snowbirds offense is going to have to get things going. You know, and they're only six points is kind of lucky, Patrick. I mean, for the ball to fall right in front of Keister and for her to, for him to have no one in front of him just to run into the house. I mean, you'll take it, but they haven't been successful passing or running. So, I mean, I mean, and that, that turnover last drive just absolutely killed them. So they just got to start doing a better job taking care of the ball. Well, and you got to 
you got to make sure that you limit the damage going into halftime. You yeah. can't you can't have a short drive and and kick it back off to Sutton's Bay or have a turnover for them to have an opportunity to make this a three score game. Luckily, St. Mary's gets the ball at halftime, but either way, got to bounce back. They're going to go for two. Duvall's about eight yards back in the shotgun. He's going to keep it. We're trying to run off to his right side. Really has no room. Now he's going to drop back to pass, and he's got a mind wide open. What a great play design there for Sutton's Bay. They get the two-point conversion, and the spread is now 18. We're going to step aside. We'll have the kickoff when we return on Next Level Broadcasting. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right. Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Vision Source and Gaylord Eye Care are proud to be offering their services to local communities across northern Michigan. With locations in Gaylord, Boyne City, and Bel Air, they're committed to serving you and providing a trusted source of credentials and experience. If you're struggling with anything vision related, don't hesitate to schedule a consultation and experience our friendly and experienced staff for yourself. All right, welcome back into Snowbird Football on Next Level Broadcasting. Snowbirds trail 22-6, to 6, 3.19 to go, second quarter. They'll be receiving a kickoff from the Norseman, Jack, and they need to respond here offensively. If you can make this a one-possession game going into the second half, you feel a lot better about your first half if you're St. Mary's. Absolutely, and, and not having any touchdowns scored offensively. The kick is kicked to Chris Koshoniak. He picks it up. He crosses the 30 and the 35, waiting for blockers as he gets close to the 40. Second effort, he will get it out to the Snowbird 40-yard line. So they'll have 60 yards to go with 310 to play in the first half. And that's a good return there by Koshoniak. 22-6 is the core, as you, as you said before, Patrick. The Birds just got to get something going offensively. Nothing has been successful. Sutton's Bay has some big boys up front. It's really hard to stop them. And, uh, yes, St. Mary's just got to get the running game going. Just either got to get the ball in the hands of Koshoniak or Jeffers. Looks like they're going to keep Jeffers in at the quarterback spot. He's got Koshoniak to his left, Cordy to his right. Keister in at tight end. 3-10 to go in the first half. He's going to hand to Conrad Cordy. A lot of room up to the left side. Cuts back. He's got five, now six yards. Breaks a tackle. Has a first down. And Conrad will not go down. Wow. Finally loses his balance at the 43-yard line. That is a heck of a run, and hopefully that will inject some spark into that Snowbird offense. That's an excellent run right there by Cordy. Doesn't want to go down. Good energy. Saw the same thing happen last drive, but St. Mary's just needs to do a good job taking care of the ball. Yep. No turnovers, no fumbles, no interceptions. Snowbirds move quickly, 245, handoff Chris Koshoniak up the middle. Koshoniak breaks a tackle, has a first down and more. Dragging a defender to the 25, down to the 21-yard line, and two big first down chunk plays for the Snowbirds with two and a half to go in the first half. Big run by Cordy, followed up by a big run by Koshoniak. St. Mary's is in the hurry up right now, doing a great job of driving the ball. Two minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Koshoniak back in the gun, two to his right, two to his left. He's alone in the backfield. He's going to keep it, try to run up the left side. Has some room up to the left side, but a nice open field tackle there made by Sutton's Bay on the far side, and it'll be second and long for St. Mary's. And St. Mary's just defensive rush right there, dominating the St. Mary offensive line. Koshoniak has nowhere to go. Normally, Koshoniak is a threat outside of the pocket, but with that defensive front doing such a great job right now for Suns Bay, they're keeping them contained. Same formation, Koshoniak in the gun. We're exactly one minute or two minutes to go here in the half. Dom Keister, oh my goodness, it was almost picked off wow. by Michael Whitman, and he had nothing but green grass ahead of him for 70 yards. So thankfully that ball got on Whitman, I think, a little bit quicker than he expected it to. Otherwise, that was a pick six. Yeah, and that was a good play right there. Cordy going deep up the right. Keister with the post yard up the middle. He was open, but Whitman dropped back. I don't think Koshoniak saw him. Gonna I don't think so either. Third down and 10, maybe nine for the Birds. Koshoniak has it. Quarterback keeper up the left side. Makes a man miss. He's got a first down and more. A lot of green in front of him. Koshoniak to the five. Hits a man into the end zone. Touchdown, Snowbirds. What a run by Chris Koshoniak, and he finished it off at the end by lowering his shoulder and barreling his way into the end zone for six. Just in time right there, as you said, Patrick, Koshoniak 
It's a big run, big run by Cordy, big run by Koshoniak, and then back again to Koshoniak up the left side on the quarterback keeper. Going to make it a 10-point game, big two-point conversion right now to cut it to a one-possession game. Koshoniak stays in the shotgun. He's going to keep it up the left side. He is in, untouched. Two-point conversion is good, and it is a one-possession game. So a big touchdown drive there for the Snowbirds. We're going to step aside one more time in this first half. When we come back, we'll have the end of the first half from Sutton's Bay. Snowbirds trail 14-22. to Believe it or not, Little Wagger Buick GMC in Gaylord sold more tires last fall than any other GM dealer up north. How? By not letting nobody beat our tire prices. The deals on Goodyear, BF Goodrich, and Firestone continue with gift cards up to $200 on a new set of tires. With free puncture repair, alignment check, and tire rotation, nobody beats our tire prices. Get your next set of tires from Weiger Buick, GMC, and Gaylord. All right, we're back live with Snowbird Football on Next Level Broadcasting after a big touchdown and two-point conversion by Chris Koshoniak. Jack, you knew he wasn't going down short of that pylon out there. No, he wasn't going down, and you knew he wasn't going to try and dive. You knew he was going to lower his shoulder That's to right. get in there. Dominic Keister up to kick right here for the birds. Don't want him to return it, and if you're the Snowbirds, you need a big defensive stop here because you got it down to one possession as they will kick it out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. One minute and 47 seconds left to go in the first half, as you said, Patrick. Suns Bay looking to score. St. Mary's needing a stop. You just got to be ready for the deep ball if you're St. Mary's. I mean, that, that, that's what's hurt you, uh, you know, a couple times tonight, or at least they've been been beat deep. And then, you know, on that last drive, they made the connection for the touchdown. So if you're St. Mary's defensive backs, just keep the ball in front of you, keep the receivers in front of you, and make sure this game gets in to halftime where the score is now. Yeah, and just be smart. You know, St. Mary's has been hurt in the defensive backfield all year, giving up deep plays as they stack the box. Just be careful. We'll see if they bring all eight of those guys. They're going to hand off to Bramer on the right side. Oh, wow, nice play. That's Chris Grody, Patrick. boy. Coming from the defensive end spot on the left side, run to the right, able to track down Bramer from behind. Less than a minute and a half to go. Time, time is ticking down if you're Sutton's Bay looking to let this clock run or score just before. Hey, listen, if I'm St. Mary's, I'm fine with this. You just made yeah. a touchdown. You get the ball back to start the second half. You don't want anything to happen for Sutton's Bay to get any of that momentum back. I'm good with it. Yeah, just don't get beat deep. That's right. Put all your corners back. Just don't get beat deep. Cordy up top deep for the Birds. I mean, Keister. I mean, Jeffers. Who is it? <laughs> it's Jeffers. <laughs> okay. Duvall's going to throw. Looking, he rolls to his left. He's got a receiver, and he is too. Down! A big sack for the Snowbirds! Now take a timeout. Coach O'Connell will. Chris Grody, Ian Cool in there for the Birds. And now you take a timeout, Jack, because this is such a long third down. And if you get them down again, the Snowbirds have one timeout left, and you can force a punt and have some time to make a drive when you get the ball back. Yeah, that's a good call, Patrick. And they, they got a whole lot of time to get the ball back. He had Bramer running deep, he had the corners beat. But excellent rush there by Grody, and I don't remember who else Ian it was. Cool was in there too. Ian yep. Cool and Grody, excellent rush on Duvall, able to bring him down. Third down and about 18 yards. Perfect job right there for the Birds, but just contained Duvall. They had him yeah. in the same spot earlier in the game, and Duvall was able to make a play and able to get six right now. You just got to contain him. Don't let him break free. Eight man, there's a lot of it's kind of it's kind of like flag football, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's all that open field, only eight guys. It's a lot of space for fast playmakers. We've seen Duvall a lot tonight. Roll to his left. I don't know if he likes that or if it's by design, but now he's got the field side to his right, and so we'll see if the righty quarterback elects to roll out to his right on this pass. And if you're the Snowbirds, and if you're on the left side of that defensive line, you got a lot of field to cover, but you have to find a way to turn him back inside to the rest of where the white jerseys are. Yep, and you have to stay with your guy. Duvall's shown that he can roll yep. to the right, throw back to the left, and find receivers late in the play, even if it looks like he's about to get sacked. I'm looking at Chris Grody. He's a defensive tackle on the field side. I'm looking at him to try to turn Duvall back into the middle of the field. Ian Cool on the boundary side here on our 